Hello everyone. Someone asked me about how to use menu items in Lemur, and so I thought I'd just make a quick video to show you how that's done. So here I've got a menu that has eight items in it. If I hold E, I can see all the items. And then if we look in the project panel, you see that menu has one variable called selection. In some ways, it's like the switches or pads variable because its value always represents the index, like the first item is zero, the second item is one, third item is two, things like that. But at the same time, it's not a vector, right? With a menu, you only ever have one thing selected at a time. So if we choose, for example, if we click on this, or if we click on this, you see the menu monitor never shows the braces that you get when you're dealing with a vector. So yeah, the selection variable just acts like a switch when it's in radio button mode, where you can only make one selection. Now, the other type of output you can actually do this is, a little, this is a little bit more advanced. I'm um, not going to really go into it in depth, but I'm going to turn on scale output in just a second. But keep an eye on this scale section right here. So if I turn this on, you'll notice that these become white, and you can now edit them. What this means is that now, whenever I make a selection in the menu, Lemur is actually going to scale um, the value that gets output when I make a selection down to values between 0 and 1. So see, it knows that I've got eight items in the menu. And imagine you're sending this data out to MIDI. You're sending it out to an external device or maybe a piece of software. And that device is expecting to receive values in the range of 0 to 127. Now, sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes if it's a menu um, and the device is really being efficient with its memory, then it'll only, say, scale 0 to 8. But either way, that scaling doesn't happen here. That scaling happens during the output phase. Anyway, if you don't understand that part, that's okay, but I wanted to let you know what this was because the manual does not describe how this works very well at all. All right, so then now, I guess the next question is about scripting. You know, what would you do to cause a selection to affect something else? Well, you can decide whether you want to put a script inside the menu object itself or if you want to put it inside of the object you want to affect. Like, for example, let's just take the text object because that's an easy one to work with. I'll do an example both ways because they're actually pretty similar. If I create a script inside of the menu object, I'll say set text. All right, now remember that text has an attribute called content, and so that's what we're going to want to set in this script. Now, the first and again most important thing to set is the expression and the fact that we want this to happen whenever the selection changes. So we'll type selection in here. Okay, so if you look over at the manual, you'll see that the menu object has a couple of special attributes here. The one we're interested in is items. So items will give us back a vector with all of the titles of all of our menu items. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and grab those titles. We'll declare a new variable called titles, and we'll do get attribute, get object, items. Now we know that the selection variable holds the value of the currently selected item. So since titles is a vector that has all of our items, then we just need to use that index to get the currently selected one in order to set the text's content attribute. So we're going to say set attribute. We want to affect the text object. We want to change its content property. And we want to set it to be titles. And then we want to index into the current selection close parentheses, semicolon. All right, so now whenever we make a selection, you'll see that the text box changes. If we want it, obviously, instead of having it in here to have the script actually live inside of the text box, we can. I'm going to go ahead and delete it from here, though. All right, now for our execution mode, oops, let me paste that in. Some stuff's going to have to be adjusted here. For our execution mode, again, we want on expression, but now we have to specify menu.selection. Before, we could just say selection because the script was inside the menu itself. All right, now titles, get attribute. Now, here we can't say get object, right? Because now our script is inside of the text object. So here we need to actually specify menu explicitly. That's fine. And then set attribute, text, content, titles, and then once again, selection, we have to say menu.selection, and now you have the same behavior. It's just that the script lives in a different place. 
So hopefully that was enough to get you started with the menu object. If you still have any more questions about it, feel free to leave them uh, down in the comments and I'll try and answer them. Thanks for watching.